Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of VT Workshop, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of aptitude. So, aptitude is one of the many subjects that will be dealt with in the VIT AAA exam, and it's one of the very difficult subjects for most people, simply because it uses common sense more than study. So it's a good idea to practice a lot of aptitude questions and see the logic behind the questions, and that would really help in solving aptitude questions by a snap of your fingers. So let's start off with our first question of the day. This is an assertion reason type question. In the following question, one statement is given followed by two assumptions, one and two. You have to consider the statement to be true even if it seems to be at variance from commonly known facts. You have to decide which of the given assumptions, if any, follow from the given statement. The statement here is that politicians get, become rich by the votes of the people. Maybe a true statement, maybe not. However, we'll consider the statement to be true. And now we need to judge the assumptions, both, by the statement and see if the assumptions describe the statement correctly. As in whether the assumption would be obvious because because of the statement. We need to make sure that these are related. If they are related, then we'll choose our options. We have two assumptions here. People vote to make politicians rich, and politicians become rich by their virtue. The options are only one is implicit, only two is implicit, both are implicit, both are not implicit. So which of these is correct? Now if you look at both these assumptions, the first assumption is that people vote to make politicians rich which is not a which is not entirely a true statement people vote in order to you know make sure that those guys are accountable so the number of votes that a politician get does not equal to richness and votes are not calculated as a measure of richness so therefore option the assumption here isn't implicit politicians become rich by their virtue this is again a direct contradiction To the statement. The statement says politicians become rich by the votes of the people, and here it says politicians become rich by their virtue. So both of these are contradictory. So statement assumption number two is also not implicit. So since both of these aren't implicit, option D becomes the right option in this case. C, B, and A are incorrect because none of the assumptions are implicit to the statement, and in all of these options, either one or both of them are, are said to be implicit, which is incorrect. Next question. Choose the correct alternative that will continue the same pattern and replace the question mark in the given series. We have the series 3, 4, 7, 7, 13, 13, 21, 22, 31, 34. Well, naturally, when you're tackling a number series question, the first thing that people do is to find out the differences. But if you notice, you have a difference of 1 and then 3 and then you don't have a difference at all. Then you have a difference of six, no difference at all. Then you have eight, no difference at all. I mean, then there's a one, and then there's a nine, and then there's a three. So as you can see there, uh, the series as itself does not make any sense <clears throat> because if you look at the differences, then the differences turn out to be various random numbers. So that approach does not work. Then what approach does work? Now, in some number series, um, uh, the, questioner, the question happens to be two number series clubbed into one. So if you were to take every odd number of this series as a separate one, which would be 3, 7, 13, 21, 31, and every even number as another series, I mean, every even position as another series, so that will be 4, 7, 13, 22, and then 34, 4, 7, 13, 22, 34. So let's see if this approach works. So um, 7 minus 3 is 4, 13 minus 7 is 6, 21 minus 13 is, well, 8. 
um, 21 minus 31 minus 21 is 10. So as you can see, there is uh, the the differences are increasing even numbers. So we have starting from four, then you have six, then you have eight, and then ten. So you have a series there between the odd between the odd positions. What about the even positions? Seven minus four is three. Thirteen minus seven is six. Twenty-two minus thirteen is nine. Thirty-four minus twenty-two is twelve, and so on. So therefore, the even positions in the original series are related by increasing multiples of three. So as you can see, you have two separate series which are clubbed together. So when you look at it as a single series, it does not make sense. However, if you separate them into two series, then they make perfect sense. So how do you find out the next number? So this is odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, and then the next number, that's the question mark, is in an odd position. So that means it belongs to the series where the differences are increasing even numbers. So the next number, that's the question, must be different, must be, you know, uh, 12 digits more than 31. 12 places more than 31. So therefore, uh, question mark minus 31 would have to be equal to 12. So the idea is to add 31 and 12. 1 plus 2 gives you 3. 3 plus 1 gives you 4. So therefore, the right answer is option B, 43. The other options are incorrect because they would not continue the series as we've shown here. Now, it may be that there are more than two series in... Uh, the in usual questions you'll have two series like this which are you know combined together sometimes even three may be possible however uh, most questions would stop at three series combined together because you know if you have more than three then it's really hard to track the numbers so therefore this is another way in which number series may be arranged so therefore please look out for that so if your original idea of the differences of the original series is not working Try splitting them into two series or even three to see if that works. So that's how you solve these kinds of questions. Now let's look at this question. Introducing a boy, a girl said, he is the son of the only daughter of the father of my un maternal uncle. So we need to find out how the boy is related to the girl. Now, here we need to construct a family tree based on the you know, info given. Now we have two people, a boy and a girl. We know that the girl has a maternal uncle. So a mother married or, you know, uh, formerly married to a husband. Now this lady has an uncle. And this uncle, <clears throat> and in the question it says, father of my maternal uncle, so therefore, this uncle and the mother, of course, are offspring of a father, which in this case is grandfather to the girl. Now, <clears throat> how is the boy related to the uncle? Now, the girl says he is the son of the only daughter of the father of my maternal uncle. Now since the boy is the son of the only daughter and since we know that the mother of the girl is um, the daughter of um, this grandfather so therefore we will have to concede that the boy is also the son of, a, of the girl's mother. So technically the girl and the boy are siblings so the boy is the brother of the girl. So option A, brother, is the right answer. Options B, C, and D are incorrect because um, if you were to say uncle or son-in-law, uncle would mean he's of a different generation. Son-in-law would mean that he's from a different family altogether, which are related by marriage. And nephew means the girl will be in an older generation than the boy itself. Of course, that doesn't happen with this particular family construction. So option A, brother, is the right option. 
Next question. Now, this is a series of two questions with the same instructions. So the instructions go. In these series, you'll be looking at both the letter pattern and the number pattern. Fill the blanks in the middle of the series or the end of the series. So over here, we have a question to fill in the blank at the end of the series with only letters. So we have the series Q A R R A S S A T T A U blank. And the options are U A V, U A T, T A S, T A T. So how do we solve this question? Well, for starters, we know that all of these different elements of the series would have the letter A in the middle of the triplet. So therefore, the letter A is static. You can also gather that from all of the options given because all options have the letter A in the middle. So therefore, there has to be an A in the end of that in that element which is missing. Now let's write down all of these elements together in order to make sense of them. Now if you look at these elements, the central letter A is always static. If you look at the first letter, it goes in alphabetical order starting from Q. So the next letter is kept as the first letter and so on. Again, the, less, the, the, the third letter of each triplet is again following the same principle. It's, it's following the alphabetical order starting from R. So the first letter will be R in the second one, it will be S in the uh, third, third position, so, and so on. So Q becomes R, R becomes S, S becomes T for the first letter, S becomes R becomes S, S becomes T, T becomes U for the third letter. So for the missing uh, triplet, A obviously has to be in the middle, and since it comes after T, A, U, the first letter would be the letter next from T, which is Q, which is U. So therefore, U happens to be the first letter, and since um, in the last triplet, U was the third letter, and since we are following the alphabetical order, the next letter would have to be V. So therefore, the correct triplet in the pattern is U, A, V. So that means option A is the right option. Now let's look at the final question for the day. Again, it's part of the of the series questions. Now here in this particular series, we're having a letter and number pattern, and the blank is in the middle of the series. Earlier, the blank was in the end of the series and there was only a letter pattern. Now we have a number pattern as well. So if we look at the pattern, you have DEF, DEF2, DE2F2, blank, D2E2F3. Now, if you notice, D, E, F, the letters are constant. The only change happens in the subscript. So let's write down those subscripts one by one. First of all, you have D, E, F. That means you have a subscript of one in each letter. Next, you have D, E, F, two. So therefore, the subscript changes from one, one, one to one, one, two. Then you have D, E, two, F, two. So that's one, two, two. Then you have that blank in the middle. And then finally, it shows two, two, three. Now, if you notice, um, there is an incremental, there is an increase uh, of one in each of the digits as we move on from right to left. So first of all, there's one, one, one. Then there's an increase in the rightmost digit. That's, so it became one, one, two. Then it goes to the middle digit. So therefore, the increase is now in the middle digit. So it's one, two, two. So ideally, according to this series, the next um, the next triplet of subscripts would have the leftmost digit turn from one into a two because it's being increased. So therefore, two, two, two will become the correct set of the subscripts. And then if you look at it, the next series would start with the rightmost again, which will be two, two, three. So therefore, as you can see, the correct choice of subscripts is 2, 2, 2. When you add that to D, E, and F respectively, you get D2, E2, F2, which ironically is option D. So therefore, option D happens to be the right option. As you can see, the pattern then continues. You have D2, E2, F3, and then the series would go on to become D2, E3, F3, and then the E3, F3, and so on. So that's how the series progresses. 
So option D, D2, E2, F2 is the right option. So that concludes this episode of VT Workshop. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get <clears throat> the latest episodes of VT Aptitude or any other subjects of VT or any other series from this channel, then please don't forget to hit the notifications icon present below the video. So, until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.